The Dominic Ferrioli Foundation is proud to support Headline, a multimedia project devoted to raising awareness of various public health issues. The foundation, established in 2001, supports charities throughout the Capital District with a focus on medical services. Yeah, I'm a hybrid student, so I go in one day and I'm home the next day. We sort of have a system of A and B day. I'm a B day student, so I go in on B days and I'm home on A days. I'm doing remote learning because um, I am pretty scared of like the virus and like my family getting it. It's a lot different. Like when we all go to school, we there's dots on the um, sidewalk and we all have to stay six feet apart. All our desks are six feet apart and all our teachers have to wear masks. This pandemic has been really difficult on the college age kids and the high school kids approaching applying for college. Um, there was a, a great effort by SUNY recently to do an extensive mental health outreach for the kids at the SUNY campuses. Not only did they add telehealth, uh, but they added a service to help students uh, identify and refer themselves to a counselor within their own health insurance. I got accustomed to it a little last year as quarantine went on during school, but as a senior it's definitely different. Don't have any of the senior perks like leaving school during a free period or senior lounge, you can't even utilize that. I don't like the online part, I don't learn as well. I'm more of an application-based student, so I like to do hands-on stuff and be present in the class. Remote learning is pretty hard sometimes, but it's also pretty easy because like, um, you can just like wake up and then go on your class right away. I think this learning process is definitely worse for me. I think being in school is so much better. It's more active and you're there in person just taking in all the information while you're at home, you're easily distracted, whether it's your phone or something going on in your house, there's a lot more distractions, so it's pretty hard to stay focused and get things done. Now there was a lot of really harsh predictions about how hard this would be on children. And for the most part, especially the younger kids, they're taking it very much in stride, which is what you would expect, that children are very resilient. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's definitely funner than a normal school year because I like that the classes are smaller and I can focus better. It's kind of like fun in a way that we all get to be in one room because like we re like you get to like know people in your classroom better than having so many kids because um, I only have 11 kids in my class and then the other group only has six kids so that's really nice um, and I really like just like how more safe it is. You know, the concerns about they wouldn't wear their masks, not an issue at all. They're really not concerned about the mask. Um, yeah, I, it has like a seam in the middle, so it, um, it like pops out so it's not stuck on my face and it's really easy to breathe through and I really like this mask. This is like the mask I wear at school every day. I think the biggest thing is that they can't share toys or they can't touch their teammates or, or uh, classmates. They have to play shadow tag instead of real tag, uh, those types of things. But other than that, um, I, th I think the concern is what we aren't seeing. Because most of the learning has gone to remote and most of the teachers don't know the kids. We don't use a looping system in most of the public schools. Looping is when a teacher stays with the same class of children for a number of years. We call it virtual learning, or remote learning, because it's like you're on a remote watching. This year I'm in second, but right now, in this year he's in kindergarten in Lattonville. Uh, he's having a few problems and he's doing trouble. Like not listening, doesn't, doesn't do the right things that the teacher says, complaining. My school takes longer than him. I have 18 more minutes than him. Uh, the United Hospital Fund recently did a report, and there are long-term implications about the learning loss um, that will happen if we can't get back to face-to-face -face learning. Um, and that is an estimate that 8.5 billion in income uh, could be lost to this generation of students because of learning loss, because they can't achieve the level of learning uh, through remote and virtual learning that they would have if they were in face-to-face -face settings.
I want to emphasize that school-based mental health and school-based health clinics are still operating. So even though the kids may not be physically going to the school building, if they want to speak with a mental health or health profession, professional, those um, options, if they were in their school building, are still available. You know, we feel that those services could be the first line in trying to, if a parent is noticing sleep changes or frustration, some kids can take that in stride and there's no issue, but if you start to notice that there's frustration with the varying schedule, that that might be a good reason to request uh, a mental health screening. We encourage parents, if you want that type of screening, contact your school-based health center or your school-based mental health center. Don't overthink stuff, because like it will get better like soon. I just say to be optimistic, it is what it is, and just to um, enjoy it. Just remember that it's okay you're staying safe, and it's for a good reason.